Actually, wait, and we're live. Thank you, everyone. Back to our live stream. Today, I'm going to play with uh, my girlfriend, Christina. Everybody knows who she is. So we're going to play uh, a set of 10 ball race to 21. I'm giving 11 games on the wire. Uh, and we're going to play uh, for seven days of washing the dishes. Usually, I'm not the one doing it. Never. So, uh, it's high stakes for me. Uh, let's start and see. Bond, it's your turn. Okay. Hey, guys. <laughs> we're actually trying a different, uh, a different method, and it's kind of funny. Of course, right when we hit go live, we're getting a little bit of lagginess. Um, how's everybody doing in the chat? I am, I'm running the stream for Fetter today. Uh, oh, you know what it is? I didn't unmute the stream. That's what it is. <laughs> Here we go. Now you guys have audio from them. So welcome to the stream, everybody. Uh, we're doing a race to a race to 21 and Fetter's given Christine 11 on the wire and they're playing for some serious serious stuff here if Fetter loses well whoever loses has to do dishes for a week so could be some drama here we'll see uh, we'll see how things go so who do we got in the chat what's up Thank you so much, Jay and Jax. I appreciate the uh, the kind words. So hopefully, as we settle into this, the uh, the stream will uh, will smooth out a little bit, which I think it will. We also have access to multiple camera angles today. Let's check this out. If I can get this set right. Yeah, check that out. For the jump shot. Um, yeah, so let's watch some pool. I'm gonna try to get out of streamer mode and, uh, and watch some good pool. If you watch my channel at all, I, I stream normally on a channel called Post Up. We stream out of Sacramento, California uh, Oscar Dominguez's room. And, uh, if you watch my channel at all, it's a lot of, uh, much more amateur play. So, uh, it's a totally different feel of a stream. So here I'm going to be able to really kind of dive right into the, the meat of the match and, and learn something. So hopefully, hopefully you enjoy hanging out with me for the stream. What's up, Ken Harwell? How you doing? Oh, and Fetter misses uh, what would one would think is a fairly routine kick. I wonder if the side pocket or the eight ball maybe was in the way there for the, from the natural kick. But uh, playing 10 ball with ball in hand and the four ball being up there near the seven, I wonder how she's going to decide to proceed. It looks like maybe... Yeah, maybe going for multiple fouls. Here we go. Yo, what's up, Zek Tech? Welcome to the stream. Let's go. I think the feed is coming through a lot clearer this time than last time. We kind of, we reworked how we decided to, to get the stream to go out to you guys, and I think it's working a lot better. This is brutal. This is a brutal spot to be in. The two and the three are in the way from a one rail kick. If he's married to that six ball, then uh, he's gonna have to go two rails around the two. What a hit. Sorry guys, I spoiled it. I spoiled it for you. I watched on my, I can actually see Fetter's 
view to me or better fetters a uh, stream before you guys see it i'll try not to look over there so i can react with you guys that was an incredible hit Uh, if you're getting any blurriness, if you're getting any blurriness, make sure you check. You can actually go down right here in the bottom right corner of the screen and click on settings and then pick your quality so that you make sure that it's not going to be, you know, a lower quality than you want. Yo, what's up, Gerard? See you in the chat. How you doing, buddy? The crystal takes it 21 to 17. Dude, for anybody that thinks that Fetter is like a, a lock on a match like this, there's no chance that he's got it on, on lock. Christina is... Look at this. Look at this shot. Christina is scary behind the queue. I played her, I had the pleasure of playing her once at the Brendan Crockett just after, the first Brendan Crockett just after COVID. And uh, I played two safes that I thought were really good safes on her and she just jumps them in and runs out. Yo, what's up, Jim, Jim Mandingo in the chat, what's up? And Evan something that is an M. Couple of familiar names, what's up, Michael? More jump cue action. These two are so ridiculous with a jump cue. <laughs> Robert Frescas, dude, I lived in an apartment that had no dishwasher for two and a half years. It is not fun. Nice touch. Cue ball's really far from the six and the nine. So the jump is off the table, so to speak. <laughs> Obviously, you gotta keep the cue ball on the table, but uh, the jump is off the table, meaning not on offer. Wow, decent hit, but she doesn't call the pocket. She doesn't call the ball. These are the kinds of shots that just, that if the five goes from here, these are the kinds of shots that, that really set Federer apart. <laughs> it's just, it's too good, dude. It's a hanger. Will there be a Friday Night Fight stream later tonight? Yes, guys, if you want to see some really uh, fun amateur action at 6 p.m. on Post Up, 6 p.m. Pacific, um, on Post Up, just go subscribe to that channel. We'll be live. We got a really fun matchup between two guys that are around 500 Fargo. Uh, I think they're playing for a couple hundred a man. And then after that, we've got a big match between two stellar players, one pocket match. They're playing race to four. It's the Roofer versus another local named Francis Rita Rita. 
uh, Francis beat Oscar Dominguez in the finals of the One Pocket Tournament a year, two years ago. Um, so, and that's playing even race to three, beat Oscar Dominguez. So, uh, really good player. Two really good players playing some One Pocket for five hundred uh, for the second match. So we'll be going until about probably around ten p.m. And then after that, we got a big weekend. We got a big weekend tournament. The the Little Al Romero. Sorry for the buffering, guys. The Little Al Romero tournament is going to be happening uh, all weekend. Come on, buffer. Another one pocket tournament happening all weekend here in Sacramento that you can tune into on post up as well. Sorry, I get distracted by the, the video buffering. Sorry about that. Uh, but Fetter takes the first game. Third block. Shorty Dancer. No, Fetter is, uh, they're playing at home. They are playing at home over there. I believe in, in first blood, he says. Yeah, take it. Um, I think they live in Illinois, right? Yo, what's up, Jinx It Up Stall? Good to see you too, man. Memphis, Indiana. There you go. <laughs> I wish there was an emoji for each ball. There's an idea. The way he moves the cue is so beautiful, guys. Uh, Fetter is the perfect example of what I, this is my definition of a good stroke. A good stroke is a, a stroke that transitions smoothly from backswing to forswing, uh, accelerates smoothly to contact, and decelerates smoothly after contact and stays perfectly on the shot line the entire time through that motion. I mean, every time he moves the cue, it's just like, it's perfect. And he pros at hard times tonight. Not tonight. We got a couple guys pretty close to pro level. Well, as far as one pocket goes, playing on stream. That match will happen around 7 to 8 p.m. Pacific. He does call the bank. Here we go. Bank pool, Derby City Classic, bank pool champion. Try to throw the curse on him. But it's a hanger. Let's get real. That's like literally the hanging one pocket bank. Uh, and game number two goes to Fetter Dorst. How do they say her last name? Is the T silent? No, it's to catch. Christina to catch. And the Black Widow, that's right. Thank you for reminding me, Eric. Any pros gonna be there tonight? Yeah, dude, the Black Widow's gonna be in town tomorrow. She's swinging by the room to, to hang out and play. Um, I think a bunch of exhibition games. I, hopefully, if they do it in the back room, I'd love to. Uh, I'd love to stream a little bit of that action. Let's 
scratch on the brake. You know, this is a little goofy here because of where the where the six and the nine lay. You don't want to leave yourself too much angle on the two ball. You'd rather just get rather straight and not let the cue ball move much. Yeah, this is this is pretty good. Perfect. I wish my wife played pool too. Preaching to the choir, Warren Flat. Preaching to the choir. <laughs> I look forward to meeting her for sure, Ike. Bit of, little bit of dishes, nerves, maybe. <laughs> I talked to Fetter before the stream. He says he hates doing the dishes. Put a lot of spinach on that ball. Did you see how the five ball kind of bobbled? Trying to spin up table for the six. Not looking good for Christina out the gate. Yeah. Gorst mode. I feel like it's awkwardness in that room. I'm sure they'll get over it. A little bit of friendly jawing at some point, maybe. Gorst. Takes game three. <laughs> Cry now, laugh later, yeah. No, I'll have the Cheetos on my stream, thank you very much. If we're on Fetter's stream, we gotta, we gotta respect the mic. So Fetter scratched on the last break, right? Uh, Tyler Hess, uh, as far as I remember, it was 11 games. I think I, I looked at his post right before I up, updated the uh, scoreboard. Look at that cue ball. Look at that cue ball. Ooh, nasty. Oh yeah, Tyler. Not yet. So as far as the equipment that they're playing with, they're they're playing on a diamond table. Fetter says it, it's four and an eighth inch pockets, but as you can tell from all the marks on the on the cloth bed, uh, they have not changed the cloth in over a year. So it's gonna be playing pretty grippy, a uh, little bit slow. 
but you're, you're probably not likely to see many uh, terrible skids, you know, like you would on, on really fresh cloth. Yeah, diamond tables have very tight pockets. They have that deep shelf. So when you play on four and an eighth, it's it's tough. It's a tough table for sure. Let me pull up some of this. Uh, Feder was giving me some good information actually about the cues that they play with and stuff. Uh, Obviously, Fetter plays with a Q Tech, uh, and he takes game four. It looks like, yeah, game four going Fetter's way. So Fetter plays with a Q Tech Walnut with a Synergy twelve point five shaft, uh, Kamui Brown medium tip on that, and his. Uh, Break Q, he plays with the Breach, the Q-Tech Breach, with a Town tip on it, the Break tip. And uh, Q-Tech Propel Jump Q with a Town tip on it for jumping. And uh, Christina plays with a Predator Black series with a 12-9 Revo on it, with the Victory Medium tip on it. With a BK Rush and a, the BK Air Rush. Sorry, the, the, not BK, the Predator Air Rush. Jump cue. Does he lay up a safe? You can't send the two at the eight ball because you're so likely to leave it hooked behind the 10 and the six, right? So where are you putting the cue ball, behind the four here? Yikes. No air rush today. By the way, guys, could I get some quick feedback in the chat? How's the audio coming through from the room? Uh, the audio from my mic, is the balance good for you guys? I haven't had a chance to go back and, uh, and do like a check. I'm just going off my graphics on my streaming software. Nice, thank you guys, appreciate it. She does miss the kick short. That's the other thing, is a, a table with old cloth on it is gonna play short, right? So if you miss a bank, you're probably it's probably because it banked short. If you miss a kick, it's probably because it kicked short. Which audio is loud? The the room audio from them or my mic? It's probably my mic. There we go. That might be a little better. Look at that. Just so much control. So much control over the draw. I'm sure she's trying. Let's see, what else can we talk about? Uh, if you guys wanna support these players, go check out their uh, their websites. Uh, Christina has a 
online or uh, an orderable workbook, first of all, if you go check out her website, I'll, I'll put that in the chat here in a second, but she also has online course material. You can go check that out. I'll get the link for you right now. If you wanna check out her website, it is right here. Put it in the chat. Oh, I'm not signed in. It's actually Christina to catch com. I can put it right here. Right there. You guys really want to see their face, don't you? <laughs> when they're sitting down. Let me see what I can do, guys. I can go just a hair smaller. I can do it like that. And then watch this. There, now you can see most of his face. You just can't see his forehead. Is that better? Calls the three. The one's going to end up in no man's land. see that ball. And if he can, he's probably off to the races. Uh, Puya Mo, I'm pretty sure there's some people in the chat that if you want to bet on that, they'd be willing to take that bet. <laughs> hey. Ooh, baby drama. Drama. Not that I'm encouraging it. <laughs> Puyamo. I'm just stating facts. short. This is one of those times when you probably see in a pro event or you'd hear one of the commentators say, well, he didn't really hit that one the way he wanted to. But uh, eh, he's fine. They always say that. Ah, they're fine. Because it's better freaking gorse, dude. That's so sick. That's so sick. 
Uh, I think that they do have the live feed probably on a TV on the side, just so they can see the quality. I think they might have the chat up there too. I'm not sure though. They can't hear what I'm saying though. They have everything muted. cinch stroke here or does he let it out who wants to see him draw the ball three rails he'll just cinch it i'm sure just slide over yeah and that's game six in the books Better's like, I don't want to see a Brillo pad in the next week. Yo, what's up, Bionic Buddha? Welcome to the chat, buddy. So the next thing that these guys are going to be doing, they're actually going uh, to Ohio. No, not Ohio. Wisconsin. Next week. They'll both be playing in the uh, Predator Pro Billiard Series stop in Wisconsin next week. Baraboo. Baraboo. Wisconsin. So it's a nice little uh, serious mode practice session together. I'm trying to get some 10-ball practicing because those, pardon me, those pro billiard series uh, events are all 10-ball, right? Doesn't come up with a shot on the two-ball. It's borderline bankable, though. But why would you bank when you're a pro? <laughs> when you're not, uh, when you're paying the bills playing this game, you're never gonna bank that ball. Slow kicking. And she's going to be locked up on this five ball. I love how Christina plays. Mr. Fan. Mr. Fan Fanaticrat. Mr. Fanaticrat, I love how she plays. Dude, her back paws, for anyone that wants to incorporate that into their game, just watch how she does it. She does it so well. Oh, wait a second. If he banked at that ball... Hanging it up is a big mistake because she's uh, deadly with this cue. Don't you dare hook her behind the five. No chance. Never a doubt. Great shot. Never a doubt. Kind of uh, not ideal, not ideal lines coming off this three ball. A lot of them head towards the six and the seven. Uh, it'd almost be nice to put a little check side on it and just come straight through the middle of the table. Yeah, seven ball's a big ball going that way. She was trying to slow roll it to uh, to not even flirt with it to not even flirt with the seven ball, I think. Just judged on, on the way that she reacted to how that ball rolled. She's gonna need some jelly here. Christina's firing an air barrel. She's still doing the dishes, or he is still doing the dishes. Yeah. <laughs> Her checking account is tapped out of doing the dishes vouchers. Sorry, next time. 
he elected to run into these balls. Now watch him tie right back up. That's a cold roll. They're actually tied up worse than they were before. I wonder how he's gonna deal with it. Massive angle on the seven ball. I actually kind of like going into the rail before you hit the 10 because it hits the eight away from the 10 ball and the cue ball is not likely to get stuck behind the 10. Where if you go straight into them like that, oh my gosh, if you hit the eight first, that's so good. But for, for most people going into those balls, if you hit the 10 first before you hit the rail, does that make sense? Then the cue ball has higher odds to end up behind the 10, but he, he hit it great, hitting the eight ball first. I thought it was mostly covered. Beautiful shot. Bobbles the 10. He tried to miss it. He tried to miss it. We're looking at seven on the run. Hey, uh, Sun Kong, thank you for, uh, thanks for subscribing to Fetter's channel. Please don't forget to subscribe to the channel if you're, if you're uh, not subscribed already. He does live streams like this uh, from his home really regularly. Uh, he also puts out great content for like YouTube shorts. Uh, really good stuff. And then he ends up uploading a lot of matches that he plays in to his channel as well. Like if he gets access to them after the fact. Uh, Fetters Visa, he's going to try to play in the UK Open, he told me. Um, but he has to have something fixed with the Visa before he can do that. I'm really sorry if the alert box noise is too loud, by the way, guys. I don't have a way to adjust it right now. Yeah, I actually, I really enjoy watching Fetters um, shorts on YouTube. It's good, good content. No. Oh gosh, I thought she made it and was gonna scratch. It's like, went right from saying, I was about to say, how bad can you roll? But she gets a jelly roll by the way that, that the one ball skipped out of the side pocket. This is a long jump. So tough to be accurate with those long jumps. It's the second time the four ball's been fluked into that pocket, by the way. The only ball that's been fluked is a four ball, and it's been fluked twice into that pocket. She gave it back, which I'm assuming means the rail first doesn't go. Alessio Mirko Russo, thank you for subscribing. And Joe Kepling. Thanks for jumping in the action and uh, and supporting supporting Fetter. Slice and dice, dude. Decent speed too.
Beautiful transition, beautiful back pause. I love that. Here's the trouble shot in the whole rack. Traffic in the way. It's manageable to play good speed here, but things can happen if you... Beautiful. Right in between the balls too. Just using the tangent line, perfect. She's super straight here. She probably just takes her medicine. Slightly tougher shot on the eight. But again, quite manageable. She gets out here, she's, uh, she's looking to be out of the, uh, what would you say? I know there's a saying for it, but out of the tough times. Nice shot on that eight ball, well controlled. I got a feeling she's out here. Fantastic, fantastic, good stuff. No, no, uh, she's on the board. She was already on the board, but. Kissed. What do you mean settle for Christina's talent? <laughs> Who said something about Yeah, I would settle for Christina's talent. Dude, I would be over the moon to be able to play pool as good as she does. I, honestly, it's like my end goal in life to get close to playing that good. But it's gonna take, I mean, I've been playing for 10 years. It's probably no chance I play that good. Nudge the four ball out, did he get hooked? Imagine he's hooked. He, is he hooked? No way. He's hooked. Unlucky. Ooh, hooked on her. Ooh, I see what you did there, DH. This is tough. Difficulty degree like seven and a half out of 10 right here. On a tight table like this, so tough. She overcut it. So tough, dude. 
getting down to the five ball, you had to hit it with pace, trying to move the cue ball, you know, so tough. And he overhit it by a mile. And he overcuts the ball. Yeah, pockets are four and an eighth, correct. I'm trying not to look over at my other screen to see to see results. Oh, she gets good on this six ball. That's a fantastic shot. To hit it thick like that and still get the cue ball to, to roll across the table. I thought for sure she was gonna hit it real thin and try to come to the left side of the eight, but obviously you don't wanna be shooting combos often. A Little bit of frustration, I'm sure, missing that shot. And then we all cursed her, yep. Dude, the thing that's so interesting watching pros is like noticing how often they use the tangent line, like a stun shot, they would prefer to move the cue ball, they a lot of times they'll prefer to stun the ball hard with a little bit of side juice to, to change the angle off of the rail just so that they know exactly where the cue ball is gonna hit the rail because you can use the tangent line, right? If the ball's sliding on contact, you know exactly where the cue ball is gonna hit the rail. I wish I had replays set up, but uh, I don't. Uh, I, I think for next stream, we'll get replays set up and I'll, it'll be easier for me to go back and, and illustrate exactly what I'm talking about. But Oscar does the same thing. Oscar will do the same thing where, you know, he might, you know, an amateur might try to get the cue ball to move by hitting a little bit of top on the ball and then using more side spin to try to get the cue ball to move across the table where Oscar and Fetter and Filler and Jason Shaw are so sure that they're just gonna put that straight stroke on the ball and they know they're gonna pocket the ball that even if they ramp up the speed, they can stun the ball, know exactly where it's gonna go on the tangent line and then adjust from there. Yes, Greg, this is only streaming on YouTube. Yes. Another scratch from Fetter, huh? Two scratches on the break from Fetter. A little bit of traffic with this three ball. Traffic uh, getting from the two to the three. This is actually like worst case scenario with ball in hand if you want to try to run out. Uh, Chris, I'm uh, I'm Collins, Collins Newey from Post Up. My stream, I, I stream twice a week on Tuesdays and Fridays out of Sacramento, California at Hard Times Billiards in Oscar's room. Uh, so yeah, I stream twice a week on Post Up and then I also stream all the big local tournaments um, here at Hard Times and a couple other places here in Northern California. Big stream this weekend. Friday Night Fights after this stream at 6 p.m. on Post Up. So I, I, 
don't consider myself a, a professional commentator by any stretch of the imagination. I'm a pool streamer. I love the game. I like talking about it. Uh, I like hanging out with you guys in the chat. I think the funnest part for me, the funnest part of pool is being in the pool room and being on the rail with the other railbirds and just chopping it up and, and talking about the game and talking smack with each other and having a good time. So the, the feel on that stream is very loose. I mean, the people in the booth that join me are, they're all locals. Uh, we have a few beers, we just hang out. We have some good times. Uh, Christina misses the five a little with the head scratch. Just uh, it must be maybe something with the stroke, not not feeling. She'll, she'll do like something really solid, you know, looking really solid, looking impervious, and then missing a, a pretty routine shot. Oh my god. <clears throat> no pucker there. But yeah, uh, Gerard points out that the chat on post up is really fun. We have a good time, man. It's a lot of fun. So if you want to go to a pool stream where you're not necessarily not necessarily there for, uh, you know, professional level play, and you're not necessarily necessarily there to, uh, you know, watch people run out constantly, but you want to watch pool and have a good time with some fun people, it's a good time. Now, that being said, the main card match tonight on my stream is a hell of a one-pocket match between the roofer, if you've ever heard of him, and uh, Francis Rita Rita. So that main card will start around 7.38 p.m. Race to four, one pocket, 500 a man. He calls the six in the corner. Older cloth, so any side spin on the ball is going to grip extra. So if he has, if he decides to hit this with any side, he goes for the two rail option. He went for the two rail option right there because if he misses the six, look at how long the cue ball was eclipsed or the six ball was eclipsed by the the nine and the ten there, because he knew going two rails the cue ball is coming back up table. But if you go with the one rail option to kick at it, your odds to make the ball improve, I'd say marginally, very, very little. But when you miss it, the cue ball's right by the six and you sell out an easy safe or maybe an easy cut. Obviously, oh, Christina gets a little jelly there off the point. But yeah, obviously he sold out a shot that time, but the odds of getting safe after missing are, are much higher with a two rail kick there. Perfect for a, uh, a stun shot, leaving the straight in 10. Beautiful stuff. Gets her to lucky number 13. Hey, thank you, Matt. I appreciate it. Oh, we got D'Artagnan in the chat, too. What's up, D'Artagnan? Oh, and Marty. Yeah, good to see you, man. Bunch of post-up regs in the chat. Yes, and I just got married. That's right. <laughs> this last weekend. Uh, Ike, no, I haven't. 
It's been, uh, I've been quite busy with work actually, a couple of really long days, I'm getting home exhausted. Thank you guys, thank you. Married life is great. I didn't think it would feel different, but I actually feel different. Feels like, uh, feels like the beginning, you know, the beginning of a life. Q time, I think I know who that is. Jackie Diamond in the chat. A kick here out the gate for Christina. Looks like she's going one rail option. No, she does go two rail option. Gerard, she's probably hiding from you. <laughs> I'm just trolling. Got to imagine she's going to try to thin the ball here. Can, can she, if she can see past the tent, it looks like she can. It's like we have the perfect camera angle to see that. Thin the one ball, go around the four and the three, you would assume. Or is she just going to bank it? Try to leave the cue ball by the eight. Yeah, thanks, Sensei Nate. This shape D. I call that a shape D. Couple of people in the room here. I can actually show you guys the room here at Hard Times. Not to distract from what's going on, just a quick little glimpse. We just got all new tables, uh, or the tables redone. We just got the tables redone. In sharp gray. Check it out, and we got Rudy on the side get, getting some action from, uh, oh no, must just be hitting balls with George. Yeah, the tables look great, man. The tables look great, let me get this camera out of the way and stop distracting. The tables look great. Eh? <laughs> yeah, brand new slick cloth, yeah. Nice shot, a little bit of around the world. It's kind of tough to get an ideal angle coming off the third rail towards this four ball. Got to get pretty close to the corner pocket. She must be uh, drawing to the other side of the five. I wonder what's going to happen. I can't see how straight she is. She must have an angle here. She looks a little straight to get around the five, honestly. She whipped it into the five. That things lay decently to get behind the seven, I think. What's her Fargo? These days it's gotta be around 730, 740. Let's check it out. That's a good question. Might even be higher than that. She does go behind the seven, hits a great.
728. Sellout. A little sellout coming up here. Game 14 is on sale. On clearance. Yeah, Teresa Whitaker, uh, I think the, the gray is going to look great on stream. As far as like the feature table goes, where we got multiple camera angles, it's going to look really good. Oof. Oh, that feeling. Oh, that's the worst feeling in the world. I hate that feeling. All the hard work is done. That one is gonna hurt. He's in her head. Maybe it's you guys. Maybe it's the stream. She's played on stream before though. Obviously, all the time. She's a pro. <laughs> I'm sure it feels different with the tournament on the line. Hey, Rick Kaleo, me, because she's in Thailand with my sister. Don't ask questions.
So when I shoot this shot, I always try to slide over for the uh, seven, and I tend to miss the six. And he decides to shoot the seven in the side. Okay. I wonder why he does it that way. Probably to get back to the eight. Wonder if it was a positional choice or just a, like a preference thing. It's like moments like that, little subtle things like that, instead of trying to cinch the ball to shoot the seven in the same corner, instead he decides to let the cue ball slide across to hit the side rail to shoot the seven in the side. It's those moments where I would love to just have a little, like a Neuralink in his brain to just hear his thoughts and his thought process about moving towards that shot. Because it's obviously good. Like obviously it's better than what I would do, obviously. But how he gets there it's not the it's not the answer that I want. It's not the choice that he makes that I want. It's the thought process that leads to that choice because a lot of the choices that I would make are very similar to to what he or a pro would do, right? But there's little subtle things like that that they just do slightly different than I do and it's it's the thought process that I'm sure is different. And if I could just hear his thoughts, if I could just hear Christina's thoughts. <laughs> it seems hitting the tangent line is easier and more reliable. Yeah, that was another tangent line shot, right? He just he just hit the center of the ball, tangent line shot. Playing for the seven in the same pocket crosses the pocketing line. That's a good point. And I'm quite, that's actually like a huge uh, part of my game is I make sure on almost every shot that I'm trying to go into the line of the, the intended shot or at least into the line of the appropriate side of the ball that I'm getting position on. That's actually something that I frequently think about. And another little kiss. But yeah, uh, maybe I just didn't see it on that particular shot. Oh man, tries to jump the ball 100 miles. Doesn't get over the six. Uh, Benny Cheney, the other way, I would have just hit center ball anyway. Center, center, like, like a cinch shot, you know, just below stud. I think the best answer that I saw was the uh, shooting into the line of the shot and taking advantage of the tangent line at the same time. It's probably those two things put together. Anyway. three rails into the seven. I love that shot. I love that shot. Well, second camera's down, guys.
Sorry about that. <laughs> Just learned that the second camera is not working. Might have run out of battery or something like that. We'll have to sort that out for a future stream. No scratch today. Skynet. And Fetter draws one closer. What kind of camera do I use to pan around in the room at hard times? It's called a uh, uh, SMTAV, as in Smart Audio Video, uh, PTZ camera. You can find them on Amazon. Yo, what's up, Vintan? Welcome to the chat, buddy. His cue ball, when he is breaking the balls, his cue ball has been sliding to the right side of the table quite frequently. I wonder if that's something that he's intentionally doing or I wonder if he's uh, displeased with that result. I'm feeling a hint of a gesture of, of displeasure after he breaks. Hey, Mike Myers, thank you, buddy. good dude the fact that he's just it's just automatic overcooked it a touch similar idea to what we were talking about earlier just punching the ball with with a uh, pure stun and a little outside he loves hitting the ball like that Wait, where's Joey Tate? Oh, Joey Tate in the house. What's up, dude? It's been too long, man. Are you coming out here for any of the tournaments this summer? Give me the details. I want to hear it. Which which one's you coming out for, buddy? I, I would love to see you, man. It's been too long. I can't say that I'm the streamer for sure, but I, I will let you know that uh, I am submitting a, uh, what would you call a bid to stream the BEF Nationals this year. Again, I'll see if, we'll see if they choose me again, but uh, I would love to do that. I'll, I'll keep you in the loop if, if they end up picking me. He's just free stroking, baby. Just free stroking. Just got off school, so still in the process of planning. Okay. Obviously the Brendan Crockett happens at the end of the summer or like the second half of summer, right? That's a good one. But the Chuck Marcoulis Memorial is happening the beginning of June, second weekend in June, I believe. And that's a matchroom ranking event. Here at Hard Times in California. <laughs> Yeah, 
can't see the whole ball. I wonder if he goes for the bank. Or the... Oh, yeah, right. As if. He doesn't play... Oh, there must be a two-way shot here that he sees. He sees the two-way shot with the cue ball behind the two. Again, leaving a jump. You know she likes to jump. She's got a great cue to do it with. That air rush is outrageous. And perfect cue ball. How about that? <laughs> Teresa. Hey, yikes. He's got a bit of a funny angle here. For with with where the five is in relationship to that nine ball. Bit of a funny angle. And he does juice it with outside, two rails trying to come between the six and the 10. It's still funny, this is still funny. He could roll forward and use the nine ball to stop the, the cue ball, but what happens after secondary contact? Does he end up tree topped over the nine? Or does he hit it with speed to move the nine out of there? Yeah, hits it with speed to get rid of the nine. Too smart. It's so tempting to want to baby that ball because you're like, I don't know where the cue ball is going to go. Or like, I don't know, you know, I don't want to hit it hard because they're close together. But it's better to hit it hard to clear that nine ball out. <laughs> and what happens? He made a great shot. And then he didn't. short. I don't think so, Ken. I think he just, uh, I think he had a lapse. Man, how unlucky can you get? Look at this. No way, dude. Just no hesitation, just... Oh, I guess I'm kicking. Hey, thank you so much, GWN. I appreciate that. made the side pocket. She's over there cracking her knuckles. And he gins it. Even up, boys and girls. 13, 13. My top 13 is a hair bigger than my bottom 13. There it is. 
Yes, we are double dipping tonight. Thanks for asking, GWN. Uh, at 6 p.m. ish, uh, if this runs a little long, I am going to stay till the end of this. Uh, but at 6 p.m. ish, we'll be hopping over to the post up stream, uh, streaming some local action. First match is Rance versus Rob Henson, which are a couple of guys that are just shy of 500 Fargo, uh, but they have got the most gamble in them. Uh, these two guys, they're, they're going to be playing for a couple hundred bucks each. I think it's like a race to five eight ball. Uh, and they're both animated. Let's put it that way. So if, you know, if Henson's feeling a certain way, he's going to let everyone know how he's feeling. I love that about him. It's fun to watch. Uh, and then second match tonight, we've got the roofer playing against uh, Francis Rita Rita in some one pocket action. Race to four. Even up. So, both of those guys, by the way, are two of the guys that you would say are favorites to be the pick to win the tournament this weekend, which is the Little Al Romero's uh, One Pocket Tournament here at Hard Times. That's a little 1500 added One Pocket event that we're having this weekend, which I'll be streaming as well. So, tons of streaming from this point forward until Sunday night. Over on Post Up, by the way. Just search post up on YouTube if you want to catch that action if you're not already subscribed. Go check it out. What's up, Papa Vapes? These two are playing out of Illinois. It was, I keep forgetting that Memphis, Illinois. Indiana. Indiana, not Illinois. The other I state. No, Illinois? I don't know, guys. Help me in the chat. Indiana. Thank you. I'm not good with names, guys. If there's anything that I've made clear in my past year and a half of streaming, I'm terrible with names. <laughs> Indiana. Thank you. Yeah, and if you want, uh, if you want to support these players, by the way, Fetter has a uh, website as well. He sells uh, merch and memorabilia. FetterGorst.com. Throw that link in the chat. Boom. And if you want to be able to run out like this, go check out Christina's website, christinatocatch.com. She has uh, an online course. Build your fundamentals from the ground up. Seriously, both of these players, if you want to emulate somebody's fundamentals, in order to improve as quickly as possible. These are the, these are the players to, to try to do something. Move your arm the same way that they move their arm. Grip the cue the same way that they grip the cue. Everything that they do is designed to move the cue on a straight line. And the better you get at moving the cue on a straight line, the easier it is to move balls. It's like Mark Wilson says. Mark, Mark Wilson was the first person to open my eyes to the fact that we all think when we play this game, we all think that we're moving balls on a table. We are not moving balls on a table. That is an indirect thing that we are doing. We are indirectly moving balls on a table. What we are in fact doing is moving a cue in our hands. And the better you get at moving the cue in your hand, 
in a repeatable, reliable way, uh, the better you'll get at moving balls on the table. Fetters check in the chat, yeah. That was a great shot. Great shot to avoid all that traffic. I'd say if she makes this three ball, she's uh, more than a favorite to get out from here. Now she's, she's perfect. <clears throat> she, it looks like she overran it, but I think she's probably perfect just to slide the cue ball over a few inches and just take the cut on the eight, because the cut on the eight puts the cue ball back to center table. For the nine. Yeah. People ask all the time, uh, why do you keep the cue? And I'm not going to speak for Christina, but I'm going to share what I've learned from like Mark Wilson and, and other players that have described the back pause and the transition. See how when she pulls the cue back, how long she holds it there before she moves the cue forward? What that is good for is improving your transition in your stroke. And what I mean by that is if your transition happens too quickly from backswing to forward swing, by the way, that's a break and run. Uh, if your transition happens too quickly, I, uh, everyone's heard of, uh, like slow twitch, fast twitch muscles, right? You hear about this in high school. Some people are born to sprint. Some people are born to run long distance. Well, we all have a certain blend of slow twitch and fast twitch muscles. And the only things that are reliably repeatable in a quick motion are fast twitch muscles. So if your slow twitch can't keep up and you're transitioning too quick from backswing to forward swing, you're probably not gonna be, re be able to reliably repeat, repeat your stroke, perf sorry, I can't speak today. <laughs> reliably repeat your stroke perfectly. So when you extend that transition and some players decide to pull the cue back, hold it there and then transition into a forward stroke, it allows all your muscles to, to, to work in harmony together and move the cue the same way. She does give lessons, exactly. See our buke in the chat. The cannon. And Russian Crush Gaming. What's up, guys? Little push out there. Ooh, what do you do here? Tell you what you don't do. You don't give it back to Fetter. Because you know he's going to just lay one on you. There are neuromuscular reasons for a pause. Look up stretch shortening cycles. Eccentric and concentric muscle action changes 
empower based solely on timing. Yeah. Yeah, that's that's exactly what I was talking about. Yeah. I pause. The other thing that the other thing that a pause does for you, whether it's at the cue ball before your backstroke or if it's at the back of your stroke, right? Because some people pause at the cue ball, then pull back and then go. Some people, like Christina, do their practice strokes, pull back, pause, and then go. The other thing that that does is gives yourself a moment to commit to the stroke. Look at that commitment. Look how good she hit that ball. That cue ball stopped dead. Gives you a moment to, to collect your thoughts and say, this is the moment I'm gonna send the cue through the ball. Because there's a lot of people out there that their main problem is they react to the moment when they think they're aimed right. They like, they're trying to aim, they're trying to aim, they're trying to aim, and then, oh, I got it aimed! And they just, they're already moving the second that they think they've got it aimed. It's like, you gotta commit to this drill. must have a purposeful, smooth, straight delivery. And people can practice at it for years and not be able to do it like these guys can. And they're both in their early 20s. How sick is that? she she's gonna lay the cue ball on the short rail here and slide the cue ball across the table some people would elect to uh, to draw the cue ball back a few inches there and uh, but I think maybe the reason she's doing that is because she wants to touch the long rail so that she's coming away from the long rail as she moves towards the eight yeah like this so this allows you to be sure that you have enough room to cue to put the cue on the table, where if you were to uh, do it the other way, you'd be coming across the line of the eight ball and you'd have odds to end up on the long rail. Yeah, Luke Walker, you'll see that, that the over the years as the internet has come about and, and more younger people are getting better at the game. Um, the pause has become much more predominant in professional play. Fetter's in a bad game. Yeah, exactly. She just needed a, you know, she needed a few uh, to just get the engine to turn over. I wonder what's in that red solo cup. Maybe a little bit of uh, vodka. Chill the nerves. No, I'm just kidding, Fetter. I'm just kidding. I don't actually think he's drinking alcohol while playing. As fun as that sounds, dishes are a serious matter. I don't think she plays every shot with a long cue. That's a good question. No, she has an extension that she can screw on the back. I don't think it's a long cue. They've already played, they did another match like this a while back, but they uh, they played race to 25 and Christina got 12 games and Federer won that 25 to 23.
She pushes to make the nine and Fetter is excited to get out of his chair. He was already walking by the time she moved through the cue ball. <laughs> Good idea, Ike. Back and forth, little safety battle. Gotta like it. It's a pretty big ball if you go, yeah, two rails into it. If you go two rails into this ball, it's a pretty big ball, and a lot of good things can happen if you don't make it. Even if you hit it too thick, the cue ball, the one ball could like go off the short rail past the four and the eight. We'll see what happens. He hits it one rail. And leaves it straight in. Uh, so hail? No, they cannot hear me. No. I am in California. They are in Indiana. No problem, my friend. You are most welcome. A lot of traffic here. A lot of traffic. Hey, Atati, thanks for subscribing. Um, yeah, don't forget to subscribe, guys, if you like this kind of content. Fetter goes live fairly regularly, uh, a couple times a month at least. Uh, when he's in big tournaments, he'll stream his matches sometimes on the side uh, with his, his phone. And... Uh, Really good content for uh, YouTube shorts, too, if you want to see fun little snippets that are about a minute long. He does those pretty regularly. It's a great shot. Great shot. Even if she doesn't get to the other side of the five, she could follow into the short rail. Plenty to do. Nice, Jack. Nice little $2 super chat. Yeah, live live streaming is the future. I, I love live streaming. It's so fun. Interactive. Stimulating. <laughs> that super chat gif that Fetter has, that's hilarious, dude. I'm gonna say it, she's in dead punch, folks. <laughs> yeah, Michael, you're gonna have to go over to post up to see that later. Again, sorry that the alert box and notifications are quite loud. We uh We'll have to adjust that for the next stream. Boom, baby. This ain't over yet. Anybody following the, uh, anybody have any thoughts about who's left in the World Pool Masters? 
four players left. We got the Terminator versus, uh, who's he playing? Eklund Kachi in the semis. And then we've got uh, James Aranis versus, Na uh, no, not Nayuki Oi. You got Nayuki Oi's name in my, my head, Kopin Yi. Niels is playing fantastic, Michael. To buy some dish show from MVP Custom Q is very nice. Well, Ko's gonna win. We got it. We got the Ko votes. I want Niels to win personally. I haven't had a chance to watch Catchy play in the event yet. I've been working too much. Or James, I haven't watched him play at all. But I watched Ko Pin Yi play and I watched Niels play. And they are, they've got that table dialed, man. They played great. SVB got dominated by Ko Pin Yi today. And Free Stroke and Fetter is back. Dude, Neil's got fired up when, when, uh, what's his name? Mar, Mar, what's the ref's name that was refing his game? Gave him a warning for soft breaking. And he's like, I just cut the balls a little bit too much. I just cut the one ball a little bit too much so they didn't spread open. Yes, Marcelo, and it's brought to you by Longoni Cube. Oh, that's right. I did watch a little bit of Catchy. His break, he is breaking different than everyone. He's just slamming the balls, right? Better over hit this ball by a large amount. Not like it matters though, because his name is Federer Gorse. The guy don't miss, case in point. Seventeen fourteen. Dude, there were a lot of upsets in the first round. I mean, technically on paper, they were close upsets, right? Like, Niels is supposed to lose to uh, Brain Filler. Uh, but he's still like an 810 Fargo, right? 810 to 840, he's, he wins that almost 40% of the time, like 35% of the time. Did he scratch again? Is that a third scratch? Okay, couldn't see. No shot on the one, though. Yeah. He's impervious to the curse. Slow kick safety. Doesn't get there. Dude, when they put Fetter as 16 to 1, they must have known that his visa wasn't going to work out. Could you imagine Federer at 16 to 1 in that tournament? No chance. He's at least even odds to win that tournament. And what I mean by even odds 
is, uh, oh wait a second, no. That makes sense, there's 16 players. Yeah, he's gotta be better than even odds. With 16 players, he's gotta be better than 16 to 1. Yikes. You know what I do think is a little silly about the reminding the players to uh, to break harder. And again, this is my this is Collins' post up opinion. This isn't. I'm sure Feder has his own opinions about stuff. I don't speak for Feder on Feder's channel. I'm just here to hang out with him. Uh, but wouldn't you think that they would remind the players before the match starts and before it's like in front of everybody on screen? Right? Just remind them then. Don't remind them in the middle of the match. If you remind them in the middle of a match, it should be a warning. Right? Am I being... Am I being a little ridiculous in saying that? I watched, like, in three different matches, they said, I'm not warning you, I'm just reminding you. We need to break with a forceful break. I'm not warning you, I'm just reminding you. It's like, okay. I wish I could hit a ball that straight. Good lord. Yeah, Michael, did you see that when the cue ball drew back off of that shot, there was zero side spin on it? Absolutely zero. Straight back. Yeah, it needs to be more objective, I think so, too, Mike. How funny was it, too, in Max Lechner's first match? When he snapped the nine in, like, almost three times in a row. <laughs> he does it twice in a row, three times in one match. Everybody at Matchroom's like, well, maybe we shouldn't have the nine ball on the break. Wait a second, is this guy just going to break the nine in over and over? <laughs> Thank God he stopped making the night on the break, right? Thank God. I think making the night on the break is going to become an integral integral part of the game if they leave, you know, if the players keep breaking like that. Yeah, the speed gun thing it would, in my mind, be one of the only solutions, right? Like, you have to break above X number speed. Easy. I, personally, I like the golden break, but it's a little comical when one player makes it three out of his nine games, <laughs> right? Better's back for a uh, break and run revenge here. Oops, did I do that? Did I put the score up before? Oh, okay, never mind. We're good. 16 to 17. Uh, Victor Catalina in a referee racked situation. I think it's pointless. Uh, the reason that no nine in the back pockets 
for a golden break is an effective rule. The only reason it's an eff it is a effective rule is when players are racking for themselves to discourage uh, the um, to discourage the players from racking the back two balls far away from the nine. Thank you so much for the super chat from Vietnam. Rack mechanics, yeah. Sounds like there's some dogs somewhere. Head scratcher. No way. No way he's looking at jumping the cue ball into the four so it jumps off the tip of the side pocket. Okay, no, he's not. Six ball doesn't pass the eight into the corner. I wish we could see what he's looking at. Oh, just draw it. Yeah, no, the six ball doesn't pass the ten either, so... Looks like a safe is in order. I prefer to play nine ball. I think it's more fun. It's just a faster game. Ten ball's a little bit more, uh... It's a little bit more of a grind. But for pros, I would I would agree. Ten ball is probably a better game for pros. Problem is, so many pros have the ten ball break figured out now, like almost perfectly, and then they can adjust based on table conditions. So it's it's tough. Hey guys, I'm gonna have to take a quick break away from the computer to go talk to the players that are gonna be on my stream to let, tonight to let them know that we're gonna be a little bit behind schedule. Okay, I'll be right back. This yeah, I'll be back in a flash, guys. Enjoy the uh, enjoy the show.
am I correct that Fedder won another one, or did he win two? Please confirm. He won two while I was gone that fast? Wow, 1917. It must have been breaking runs, right? Must have been breaking runs. Hey, Johnny. I'm live with Fedder right now. You want to watch him run out? Yeah. <laughs> yeah I've only done that a hundred times. What's yeah. more, it'd be great. Can I join you for the stream yeah. later? Yeah, yeah. John Henderson, a legend in the booth. John Henderson lost a game today to the guy in Washington. He played good. So, I don't have audio for you, so you won't be able to hear. That's all playing, right. but let's see if this works. This out the way. Oh, he's playing uh, Christina. Christina to catch. She's giving yeah. her 10 going to 21. Uh, 11. 11. 11 going to 21, yeah. So let me get your mic turned up. Give me a mic check. Mic check. That's pretty good. Okay. Let's get it nice and close. You can pull that anywhere you like. All right. And it's only on this screen right here. I Actually, I might be able to put it over there. Oh, it's up top. Uh, but that's on a delay, I think. Oh. No, it isn't. No, it is right there. It's all the same. Okay, cool. He's uh, he's breaking and running. He's uh, I stepped out of the booth for maybe five minutes, six minutes, and he won two games while I was gone. And it looks like he's about to win a third one. I think he plays awful hard. Doesn't matter who he's playing. Uh oh. Uh oh, really? You gonna call that uh oh? You know who you're uh -oh watching? Uh oh, for most of us. Yeah. <laughs> Uh oh, for human beings. Yeah. We're trying to curse him, guys. We are trying. We're trying to get Christina another game, but it's probably not going to work. We got him! We got him! We got him! That's what we like to see, baby. Look at Stop. Look at this. I think she'll nail this one. You think she'll make this one? Yeah. <laughs> oh, don't worry. They're playing. They're playing their hearts out against this. A hundred percent. They're playing. For a few washing dishes for no, a month. Fedder, Fedder says, I asked him before the stream. I said, now, are we, is this like a serious deal? Like, I mean, do you really... Oh, no! Oh, no. Do you really hate washing dishes that much? And he's like, oh, I hate it. <laughs> I hate it. Oh, I'm not worried. She shot that a little fast. Yeah, unfortunate. This is missable, right? That was big, too. He's on the hill now. Yeah, he's on the hill. It's not really missable. That's that's not the score. That's the score. So you've got a lot of pool coming up in the last month. Oh man, I've got I've got uh, the tournament this weekend. You know, obviously every Friday night too, and then uh, Tuesday nights we're going to do the ring games. Um, there's another event in the middle of May, the uh, the Shriners charity event, the eight ball tournament that they do. They do two tournaments every year. They do it uh, uh, next weekend, right? No, uh, two weeks. Two weeks out. Two weeks out. And then uh, I got the onepocket.org event the yeah. first weekend in June. Well, the last couple, no, the first weekend in June. And we're full. Yes, full tournament. And then I've got the uh, the Chuck Markoulis the week after that happening Thursday. How many balls did he make on this break? And then two weeks after that, don't you have yeah, 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 the big nine ball too. And I, you know, but anyway, you're gonna be busy. Boy. Yeah, busy. Yeah, I had. Uh, uh, well, anyway, I had a, a panic. Someone reaching out like to see if I could cover a stream on a specific date, and I'm already booked. You know, it's like. Yeah. It's, it's good. I had a I had a phone call. Oh, oh wow! Sash. Look at this mass a. Yeah, he's gone. I had a phone call from Saskatchewan. 
Canada, and so I just ignored it. There was no message. I figured out somebody's trying to sell. So the next time the guy called, he left a message. Uh huh. And that's a, a, he looked and he says, he says Henderson. He says I got to know you through the through the streams from hard times. Oh wow! He says, and I I love one pocket. And I'm trying to teach it to some guys in Canada. How cool is <laughs> but that? But he knew a lot of guys that I know because definitely the guys who got some money because yeah. he he also has a house on the western part of Canada and he also goes in the uh, in the summer up there he goes to Phoenix. Sure. And he play, he knows a lot of guys that I know from Phoenix. But it's, what they they're both dogging it. Call up Melina, Mike, and Joey Ryan. I mean, what are we doing here? Dogging it. What a four pack, four pack auto. Let's get real, guys. That's mostly Melina, Mike's show. Okay. This is. If you know, you know. No, dogging it. Oh. It's a, a podcast that that uh, it's put on by the Pool Player Podcast. Opportunity, not not one you'd be. I mean, obviously you're happy to have it because your opponent's on the hill, but I'm not ecstatic to be shooting that shot. And look at the result. She's got, yeah, she's all right. She'll go around the table. I see some strangers here. I see guys that know me that I kind of know. And you, so you got to act like- Here in the like, room? Huh? Here in the room? Yeah. Yeah. And so you got to act like not to offend. Oh yeah. <laughs> they come up and say, oh, it's good to see you playing again. Yeah. Oh yeah, exactly. thank you. Yeah. Haven't seen you for yeah. a while. Yeah. Oh, she cut the point and scratches. Well, what a way to end it, guys. I'm going to let, uh, let's see if Fetter has a few words here. Well, guys, I don't know if Collins is still here, but we're down for today. <laughs> uh, uh, I won the first match. I, I think we're going to do the rematch. Sometime next month or maybe this month. Uh, thanks for everybody tuning in to this stream. And I believe Collins will have a. So she won six games and he won so 20. The channel post up on YouTube. I think uh, Roofer is going to play uh, Francis, the Nate uh, Rita Rita, the Filipino from uh, California. Uh, I may be mistaken. So tune in to his stream and uh, subscribe to his channel. It's going to be a good one pocket action later tonight. Yeah, definitely good one pocket action. That's it for today. Thanks for everybody. And, uh, see you guys later. Cool. We're going to call it a stream right there. If you guys want to continue watching pool tonight, go check out post up. Just search post up on YouTube. It's the first thing that'll come up. Uh, I got to head over there and get the stream started. Sounds like John Henderson's going to hang out for a little bit of one pocket action tonight too. So everybody have a good night. If we don't see you over there, uh, cheers. Thanks for watching. Uh, how fun was that? Take it easy guys.